Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome back to lighting. We are just talking about basic Maya lighting using the lights that are provided by, well, Maya and its toolkit. So in the previous two tutorials, we went over the lights that work, directional light, point light, spotlight, area light, and the ones that don't work in Arnold volume and ambient. So I thought it would be fun to demonstrate what you can do with the lights that I just showed you. The next tutorial, we are going to go over the lighting toolkit that's provided by Arnold, which includes area lights, sky domes, mesh, photometric, light portals, and physical sky. So that's next. But let's take a look at how far we can push this. So you can find this scene at academicphoenixplus.com under downloads. Um, if you want to follow along, you're more than welcome to download it for free. In this uh, Maya scene, um, we, have, we have to identify our light sources. So we have a window where I'm going to used as a light source. I also have the light source, which is my lamp and my computer screen. Yeah, we'll see what we can come up with. So the first thing I'd like to do is create what's the directional light. The directional light is going to be my key light, the one that illuminates my environment, the one that uh, that's going to be pouring in from the window. So sometimes um, if you want to see a preview, you can click on up here which is number, I believe that's actually number seven on your keyboard, and then this one. This is just a preview so I can kind of see where this light is going to land. So I do want to be able to see my, uh, the computer and the desk and maybe bring this down a little bit so that it has a little bit of a nice lighting. And then my camera, maybe, whoops, I can kind of rotate it so it takes up a lot of the scene like so. Now, of course, it's just a preview, so let's render it out. And let me move things around. I'm going to actually turn this off. It's a little distracting for me. And um, I want to make sure my resolution gate is on. And I think this is a little big right now. So I'm going to go to view test resolution 50%. So it's just a little bit smaller. It's going to render a little bit faster and it's just going to give me faster feedback. Okay, cool. So now I've got this and now I can kind of move this around a little bit. And, you know, when you're talking about lighting, you always want, it's not just about making your environment look pretty. It's also about uh, trying to tell a story. Like, what is a story here? Is the story that I am working on my, on my desk and, you know, there's a picture here with my laptop and, you know, things like that. So what am I trying to focus on? What is the key here? what's more dramatic. So I think I'm just going to bring this to the side, maybe bring this down, maybe fix my camera a little bit, maybe something like this. The next thing I do is what type of time of day do I want? Um, I am going to be using Arnold's uh, use temperature and I want it to be a little, I'm, I'm really big about sunsets, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it look a little bit orangey like the sun is setting. I'm going to increase my exposure a little bit and I'm also going to increase my angle and soften the shadows. Of course, that's gonna require me to turn off my samples. And I said go on, I might have to go back and tweak the samples as well as we get more and more lighting, but at least this gives me an idea of what I'm going to get. So right now there's a window pulling light outside and we now have this type of shadow. So it's a little soft, I can probably go a little softer still but that should be okay. So that's my first key light. My other key light or another light that's going to be prominent in the scene is probably this light source, which is the lamp. Now there's no bulb in here. I can make one really quick, but uh, let's go ahead and use, I could use a point light, but I'm actually going to use a spotlight. So my spotlight, let's select this camera and just click, do a keyframe, hit the letter S on your keyboard so that if I move my camera around, I can always just go back. All right, so here's my lamp. Here is my light source. And I'm gonna go V and snap it, V middle mouse and snap it into the light so it goes like so. Now I can scale, it's not really gonna affect the light, but at least it, it fits a little bit better. So now I'm going to press play and it's a little hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to hide my directional light. This is very helpful because there you go. And let me turn this off because it's going to kill my computer. And I, this is going to be helpful because, um, 
you can find out where exactly the light is coming from. So let's say that I want my light source to really hit and highlight that laptop. So I'm going to increase my cone angle, or you can decrease this up to you. And I'm going to use my defaults, which is 10 and 3, penumbra angle 10, drop of 3. I'm going to increase my intensity. And of course, this is a light bulb, so that means that that means that the light temperature is actually pretty cool. So I'm going to change it to a little bit orange. Now I'm starting to think that maybe a directional light. Let's go snap it back. So this is what it looks like so far. Maybe a little too warm. And I'm going to increase my exposure because I really do want to see this. Oh, that's my directional light. Oops, oops. Okay, let me go back. Uh, I just undid. Um, let's see. I'm going to make this a little warmer. Let me make my cone angle a little larger and I'm going to expose this a little bit more so it's really highlighting that information. Now I'm not a big fan of what it's doing over here um, so I might have to shrink that cone angle. I really don't want it to get affected by that but uh, so something like this. So now it's really highlighting that lamp. So now I'm going to do a shift H which is bringing this back and I may need to re-render this and I'm a little worried because I really have a lot of just very simple color. So maybe what I should do is cool off my environment. Okay, so grab the directional light. Maybe I should actually use something a little cooler. Something like that. And then I can really bump up the intensity. So the focus is going to be here. Now, if I change this to RGB, here's the R, here's the B, here's the G. Oops, here's the alpha, here's the L. Um, it's really important to see where the brightest spot is in your environment. That's how you usually light. Um, the, usually the highest contrast is the one thing that people see the most. So you want to make sure that your lighting fits that. But uh, let's go ahead and we're going to add an area light outside the window. So I'm going to grab a Arnold area light. I'm not a, um, you could use this one, but there's two area lights. You might as well use the one that's provided by Arnold. So Arnold lights, area light. I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to scale it, oops, scale up. There we go. Usually the size of the window is a good way to go. Something like that. All right, let's see what that looks like. Not much of an effect. Why? I haven't turned off normalize. Let's go ahead and make sure we have our area light selected and turn off normalize. There we go. Now it's starting to emit lights. We're starting to see the environment. You can see that it's an infinity curve. We're starting to see a lot of really nice effects. And of course, it's starting to become a little uh, the shadows are pretty noisy, so let's ch increase our resolution by 1024, and I'm going to increase my samples by 3. I also might want to increase my intensity a little bit, and I probably will use a color temperature as well, just to light it a little bit more. So I can make this very dramatic and make it very cool. So this is a very cool environment, and then really warm up that centerpiece. So maybe I can really increase that orange. Maybe I can go a little crazy and increase the, the size here. So it just basically reads like this is really important. So you, you can use color theory of cool lights versus warm lights to able to get a, uh, an interesting effect. Um, it's kind of weird not seeing a light bulb there. So if, we, if you want, you can always create like a quick little sphere. Oop, let me turn that off. drag that in here. Now the problem is, is that it's going to block my light. All right. So if I go back, uh, the spotlight is going to just uh, disappear as you can see now, because it's now lighting the inside of the sphere. So I'll show you a trick. I'm going to grab my sphere and under 
the shape node, there is a visibility aspect and you want to tell it to not cast shadows and not to self shadow. Okay, so now I'm going to assign a material to it. Assign a new material. Um, I can use an AI standard, might as well keep the same. And then I am going to go to emission and increase the weight. There you go. I can change the color. Maybe you want to make it a little bit orangey. Whoa, hello. Come back. Um, just to give it, make it look like it's one of the, or a little bit of the bulb. So we know that the light source comes from there. So that really makes a difference. Not only is the light going through it because it's not actually casting shadows, therefore the light's going through it, but um, it's also emitting light and it looks like it's come from there, coming from there. So if we take a look at the RGB again, BL, notice that this is pretty bright, which is making us kind of look at this area a little bit more and everything else just kind of fades away. So yeah, let's pretend that the screen actually emits light, which most computer screens do. So again, I'm going to use another area light. So Arnold area lights. I'm going to go in here, but this time I'm going to flip it to this way. And I'm going to bring it in like so. And maybe bring it down like this and turn off normalize. So the effect, if I hide everything, and let me kind of organize this a little bit. So I'm going to start labeling laptop, window, like I'll be saying, so I don't get confused. Um, let's see. So I'm going to hide these, control H. So it's going to illuminate the environment as if it was a screen. Now I can increase the intensity a little bit if I like. And uh, maybe change the color to a little bit of a blue-ish because my scene or the screen is a little bit more blue. So something like so. That's more purple, but that's okay. And then I can bring everything back. So it's a very small touch, but it still makes, you know, it's, it's an important touch. Now, I really am not happy with a sharp shadow right here of the spotlight. So I'm going to go into my Arnold, select my spotlight, and I'm going to increase the radius. So that's going to help break up that edge. I'm not a big fan of really sharp edges, but of course that means that I need to increase my samples. All right, I'm going to go to my intensity for my light and just kind of slow it down a little bit. Maybe decrease the exposure so the contrast is a little bit higher. Maybe my window area light can also be a little bit less intense. So I'm starting to get a nice evening appearance. The edge is still a little too much in my light, so I'm going to go crazy. Not crazy, just increase my radius a little bit more, just because I really want that to be soft. I'm trying to uh, make sure that it doesn't create too much of a tangent on the shadows. I might have to go back a little bit and maybe reduce my cone angle. While we're at it, I might as well make this go back to 100% resolution, which makes it even nicer. That's when I usually start with a small scene and then go on from there. So. If you want this to glow, I would suggest that you open up the texture and create an ambient. Okay, I'm just going to show you really fast. I have a, f I try not to make my tutorials too long, but I'll show you really fast how to do that while this thing renders. Um, give me a second. So this is the original Photoshop file, and um, this is the one I want it to glow. So everything needs to disappear. Anyway, turn everything off except for your image. I'm going to keep this. It's fine. Um, actually, we don't even need the border because it's going to, everything's going to be black. 
I'm going to create a new layer and fill it black. Now you can make this slightly brighter if you want to, but I'm going to keep it like this. I am going to call this my emissive map. So MIS. Uh, I'm going to go to my source images and save this as a TIFF. No layers, save. I guess that's my art, my art side where I'm just like, I need to make everything look great. So just to show you one more thing, one more, that's how my classes are. It's like one more thing. Let me show you one more thing. Let me show you one more thing. I just want your stuff to look awesome. Okay. So under color, under emission, you can plug in a map. So click on the little checker, go to file, go to the folder and grab your emissive map. So assets emissive. So the effect that it's going to have is, let me see if I can snapshot this. Bloop. Okay, cool. So the effect that it's going to have is that it's going to make it look like it's uh, it's glowing. Now, I, I'm sure somebody noticed the one step that I missed, which is I didn't incre in increase the weight. So now I'm going to press play again. And now my screen is kind of glowing. I'm going to go a little, push it a little bit further. So there you go. So now it looks like my screen is glowing. Now, the good news is, is that my screen looks like it's glowing, not the whole laptop, which would happen if I increase the emissive map or the emissiveness without a map. But anything black, it's not going to glow. Anything with the texture, it is going to glow. Or it's going to look like it's glowing. So if we compare the snapshot from before, so I'll snapshot. This is what it was before. This is what it is now. Do you see the difference? All right. So once again, that was a quick tutorial on how to use uh, different lights by Maya. You can tell that there is a lot of usage for the items that you have or whatever environment you have. You can basically use those. Um, the Arnold lights are more advanced and uh, it produces much more photorealist photorealistic. It's important to learn it all so that when you analyze your scene, you'll be able to light it efficiently. So we did go over some color theory, which was kind of fun. We also went over lighting theory, um, which was also fun. And of course, all the attributes of lighting. So I truly hope you found this helpful. I really enjoy making this tutorial. So if you found it helpful as well, please share with your friends and um, or whoever you feel like it's imp could use something like this. Again, you can download this at academicphoenixplus.com if you want to keep in touch. I have a Facebook community where you can upload your work. And if you want feedback, you can also upload your work at Academic Phoenix Plus, the Facebook community. You can find the links below. Thank you again so much for listening. I truly appreciate it. And um, again, feel free to follow along. If you have any comments or suggestions, by all means, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, you can always email me directly. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate everything that you do. I look forward to seeing your art. And I will see you in the next tutorial.